Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, somebody want to call the roll for the city staff, Tanya? Okay, Wes Epperson. Here. Mike Jackson. Here. Here. Daniel Martin. Here. Gloria Smith. Here. Jerry Atkins. Here. Sorry, I can't read this. Is it Bo? Butch. Butch, sorry, Butch. Here. Zan. Tim Watkins. Here. And Fran is not here. And, okay. Oh. Hey. Mike Winkler. Mike Winkler. Here. We'll get through this. Okay, okay we ready? <laughs> okay. It's good to get back in person get to see everybody face to face. I think this will make our meetings a lot, a lot easier. Uh, so I guess we will consider the minutes uh, of March the 4th. I'll make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. I need a second. I have a correction. Yes. Um, I'm listed as absent on March 4th, and yet I'm listed as approving the motion to approve the Minutes of December 10th. Oh, yes. Okay, so we need to make a correction then. Uh, Gloria apparently was at the meeting but was marked absent. Is that correct? Were I'm you? I'm sure that. I think this is December, December 10th. No. No, this it's is March. Approving March the minutes of December 10th on March 4th. Um, and I, we, Mr. Chair, yes. I believe the error there is it would be Fran that seconded that motion. Okay. All right. Any further additions or corrections to the uh, minutes of March the 4th? Stand corrected. I need a second. I have a motion to approve. I'll second the motion to approve. Okay, Gloria. <laughs> and she's here. <laughs> okay. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, now we need to consider the minutes from the special meeting we had on uh, March the 23rd. I'll give you a minute or two to look those over, and then if there's any additions or corrections, uh, please speak up. Okay, everybody uh, had time to look at those minutes. Yeah. I make a motion to approve. We've got a motion to approve. I need a second. A second. Okay, Gloria seconds. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Okay, next we're going to move on to a financial report from uh, Mike Winkler. Mike? Mike? 
All right, Mr. Chair, uh, we have two documents that have been provided to the Oversight Committee. Uh, the first one is the summary document. Um, a quick evaluation there. These are funds reported as of July 1st through uh, April 30th. So the first 10 months of the fiscal year. And it looks like we were on point for 88.34% of the anticipated revenues for the street sales tax. Uh, that would leave two months left in the season. Uh, which would be approximately 17% left of the year. Uh, so it looks like we're right on point. Uh, if there are any in, or any particular questions of the finance report, we can uh, identify those. Yes, sir. So you're, so you're saying that we're on point for the budget for sales tax collected? Is that what for this? Uh, that's what it appears to be. Um, the budgeted total up at the top of the, the uh, worksheet uh, for the street sales tax revenue, it was estimated to be just over $8 million, and we had collected as of that date just over $7 million. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out how we're on budget because I know it should be low because I would think sales have been down because of COVID. That's what's bothering me. Why? I would think that would be down some. That's why I'm trying to figure out why. I'm, I don't mind it being on budget, but... I no, um, the, the key thing is that the overall budget, and I don't have the numbers for the 2020, uh -huh. um, of course, the adjustments were based on the forecasts for 2021. Okay. So oh, versus forecast. last year, we would have been projecting for higher, but because of the COVID impacts, uh, it was projected for this uh, total of the just over $8 million. Okay, that answer, if you guys projected it lower last year. You're Correct, right. yeah. Okay. So, um, of course, with the um, unknowns coming into it, um, yeah, this is going to be a little annoying, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, but we're 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 budget through. Um, we're gonna pause. Hold on, Mike. Okay. Okay. Uh, I need to back up just for a second and go back and look at the uh, minutes from March the fourth. Tim uh, Zan just pointed out that we show you as present and absent. Were you? I was here and not there. <laughs> I guess this is correct. I was absent. You are absent. Okay, we'll make that correction then. Thank you. That was Tim Watkins was absent. He's marked both present and absent. Okay, thank you, Tim. Thanks. Mike, you answered my question. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions on the summary report, the first worksheet? Yes, Mr. Atkins. Yeah, just going down through these real quickly, and Jerry, grab that mic, will you? Grab yeah, that awesome. mic, will I? Yeah. Get the light. Okay, on, okay the on. summary of uh, funds, uh, just running down through this, uh, I'm not sure I understand. Sales tax revenue is $8 million. Actual is seven million, and the percentage is eighty-eight percent. Next one, use zero budgeted, but we have fifty-five or fifty-one hundred dollars, fifty-one thousand dollars, and the percentage of budget is zero. So zero to fifty-one with a percentage of of zero doesn't make sense to me. The next one, income. Uh, interest income, uh, $10,000, actual was 43, so that one shows a 400% gain. And the next one after that shows zero budget, $30,000, but zero percentage. I'm not sure I'm following along how this works. Okay. Well, I can cover the conversation on the use tax. Um, as you remember, a couple years ago, the use tax, tax which was the taxation of um, online sales, the sales tax on uh, online sales, uh, was originally supposed to cover the um, animal shelter funding to support the animal shelter staff and a number of police officers as part of the, I, or the yeah, right. police department. 
at a certain threshold in that fund, it becomes or a waterfall into the other sales taxes. Right. So in this case, we would have budgeted zero because we would have anticipated no uh, waterfall into the other sales taxes. Okay. And this would have actually had a waterfall of funds into the of street sales tax. That's what it's looking like. But the so, percentage... The percentage, Mike, is zero. Correct. So we'll we'll take a look at what that would be. Um, technically, from a mathematician standpoint, it should be an approaching affinity um, from my engineering days back in college. Uh, but I can double check with uh, Laura Edgar, who's our fiscal administrator, and double check in on the um, why the percentage is not well, let's, working. Let's go on down, if you will. Uh, other miscellaneous, $7,000. Actual was $14,000, and that shows 100%. That's really about 200%. 7 to 14 is about double. I'm not good at math, but I can count on my fingers. Fair enough. So we'll, we'll double check that and make those corrections and get that back out to the, the committee. Okay. I believe the numbers themselves are correct. It appears that the the percentage, the formulas that were put in to calculate those, those percentages um, is off, obviously. Um, but we'll make sure that we get that corrected with the, the correct percentages. The, the numbers, though, um, for the fiscal year to date, actual, those are the correct okay. current numbers. All right. Now they're following along. Total current year says it's uh, 89%, almost 90%, and you say we're right on target. For 10 months. Yeah, so if you divide the month into, or the year into 12 months, that would mean that we're 10 out of 12 months through. That would be approximately 83%, so we're actually a little bit above. Okay. With the months of May and June still outstanding. Great. Thanks. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the summary report? Okay. The second report that was shared is the uh, individual projects report from the CIP, the Capital Improvements Program. Uh, is there any questions on those expenditures? Which one is that? That's just a long list. Yeah, the long list uh, starts with uh, street sales tax fund uh, fund 11, should say fund 11. I apologize about that. Uh, but yeah, it says uh, capital projects and has all the various years. If we can just go back to the other page for a second, I hate to be laborious about this, but um, get down in the second uh, group, uh, debt service. Uh, that looks like it's the same. Okay, that goes all right. Um, okay, I may have further questions about that. We'll go on with the meeting and I'll catch up. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike, I do have... When we talk about the allocation of funds, uh, I'm a little confused here. Uh, so down here where it says total operating expenditures, 1,956,000, uh, and then expenditures are 1,282,000, uh, is, is that all that of the money that was spent up to now on the uh, on projects, I mean, the overlay program would eat up four or five million dollars, right? And so, yeah, and what we have here is in fiscal year 20, um, that of course, re that report was gathered in the last quarter um, with the merger of the two departments. And this, this document became a document that was developed after that merger. So the 1.02 in fiscal year 20, that is probably something we need to dig into a little bit further as we further develop this report. 
Um, but uh, if you look at the fiscal year 21, uh, which is our current operating year, the $8.4 million uh, was the appropriation. And then if you look at the encumbrances, the $2.4 million um, with the total expenditures and encumbrances, uh, the encumbrances would be unspent funds. But there has been either a design contract in place, they just haven't done that portion of the work, or there is a uh, construction project that they have not done the expenditures for. Okay. Okay, and then the other part from the original list where it says to total operating expenditures, the uh, capital budget is where the overlay comes out of from the summary sheet. Uh, so that would be where we would be, um, I believe this year we were at 4.5 million between all of the pavement uh, management programs. Okay, thank you. So Mike, you're saying there's a 31 million that's allocated to this budget? We spent 19, we still got 11 more, 12 more to spend. Well, the key thing with those uh, uh, items was that we had the debt financing, uh, the mini bond issuance back in December of 2019. So those are found are still within budget as those dollar amounts are being spent down. Um, that actually represents $17.9 million of the uh, $31 million total budget. And then I believe, um, and I don't have that exact number in front of me, but uh, we can we can share that. I want to say we we're in the neighborhood of three to three and a half million dollars of that in the expenditures. So we're we have actually done that work. Uh, some of that work was uh, purchasing the new um, the street maintenance operations equipment. Um, some of that funding was for um, one of our intersection improvement projects where we took care of the four. Uh, various intersections for approximately a million dollars last year. Okay, then wait a minute, stop. You're going a little fast here then. Yeah, that's because basically, I just asked you the 31 million, that's our budget for last this year. You said we spent 19, but you're saying we got, you've already spent 17, nine, so now we're up to 37, 38, so now we're over budget. And you're still adding more numbers on there. No, so the 31 includes the 17.9 that was debt issuance. Right. So, so, so. that's outside of the, um, projected revenues from this fiscal year. So if I take 17 off 31, that gives me 15. And that would be the remaining balance between the 20 and 20, or it should be the remaining balance between the 20 appropriations. So the way that capitals or capital improvement projects uh, occur is that they might be appropriated over various years. Well, I understand that, but I'm just trying to figure out the budget for this year. We're coming down, it's coming down to getting closed. You said we spent 19, and you said 17's already been earmarked over here, so that leaves 15. Now we're over budget by four. Am I doing math right or wrong? 19 is the balance, yeah. And some of that would be part of the un, or incomplete projects and then also the debt issuance. So the 19 is what we spent, all right, correct? No, no, no. The 19 is the remaining budget. Remaining budget. Yeah. The expenditures is the 9.6 million. Okay, the 9.6. Yeah. Okay, so we're still got the, 10. Uh, Go ahead. Well, okay, but the actual street sales tax money is what this committee is supposed to oversee, right? And then we get into these debt fines, you know, this uh, debt financing mm -hmm. gets a little confusing. It is, and it was a issuance for deferred maintenance, which would be borrowed against future expenditures in the street um, sales tax. Yeah, because you, you lost me just a little bit there. When you said, now we got 19, we only got eight. I mean, but you're holding over, so it is, it is kind of confusing. It is, because the way that capital projects, um, let me think of one for instance, um, let's see here. Bear with me. Let me see if I can find a good example on the exam or on the worksheet. Um, 
Street? College would be a good example. Uh, College Street, which is 111805, about midway down on my page. I know I did some pretty big size yeah, printouts. Sure. But that actually started back in 2018. Okay. And so whenever any of those funds are not spent, they roll over into the next year. So that balance is any of the capital improvement projects that have not been encumbered or expensed, it keeps rolling over. Okay. And Butch, I'll be honest with you, it took me about four months to get my head wrapped I'm around sure it, and I've got about this much into <laughs> it. Uh, but there, but it is, it is a lot of projects because if you look at um, like where the capital improvement numbers are 1104 or 1117, that's actually the fiscal year that that project started. Oh, is that what that means? That's what that means. So those okay. second two digits, the first two di digits tell us that it's from the street sales tax fund. Okay. The second two digits tell us the year that that project started. Okay. And then the last two is just a random numbering so that we can keep it in the accounting records. So as those projects are appropriated but not spent because um, they may last four years in design and acquisition and then finally get to construction, depending upon how the appropriations are set. If you put all the money out front, but you're going to take four years to build the darn thing, right? You're, it's going to take until that fourth year, so that budget just keeps showing from the previous years. It's kind of like a snowball. Oh, yes, no so it, it is It is um, something that our team has been working directly with the finance department to try and un untangle it and make sure that we're understanding Maybe all the facets of it. Maybe we can get a better it. printout for next time that shows different aspects of that, like what we're working on. This is our budget. This is what had been allocated a year ago. I mean, sound, I, I can see where we got $43,000 in interest because we got a lot of money sitting in the bank waiting to be spent from projects back. That's what, I, that's what I'm assuming. You okay. throw in the debt service side. Yeah. And everything just it jumbles everything. So it jumbles everything. Maybe, yes. we could, maybe we could line it out where we very, very clear we don't include the debt service, and then we have another version where, okay, this is with the debt service, if that would help. Well, um, everything's going to help try to clear up. I mean, we got yeah. this piece of paper just emailed to us and look at it, and I'm going, okay, so I'm going, numbers aren't adding up here, though. But. Yeah. Well, and... Um, let, well, we'll take that as an action item, and I can see with our finance department and um, uh, Laura Edgar, our fiscal administrator, and see if there's a, something that can help well, decipher I mean, you that want us a little to bit prove better. this stuff and prove what's happening here. I like to have numbers like what we're doing to prove it, because, I mean, I know when we started this, when I started this a couple months ago, you guys are, well, that's already been pretty approved, so don't even worry about it, but it's showing up here, and you're asking us to prove it again. So I'm saying, well, why do we need to prove it again? It's already been approved, so that's well, bothering me. Yeah, and it's just a, um, just a update and information shared with the committee on where right. we are. I understand, and the I understand finances, that, but yeah. we need to have it. I, the, this list over here helps, but it's 2021, but we've got projects from 17, so that we're looking at still. Yeah. That's five years ago, so. Yeah, and our team has been going through and um, closing out projects, making sure that what we're showing is actually active. And as we continue to move forward, we can infill some of that information because you see it is just focused on the years that we've been involved right. with this being the municipal services department. Okay. So we're we're untangling a little bit. Okay. So, okay. So we're still getting our heads wrapped around it. Okay. I have some questions. Okay. Uh, going to the, the long sheet, whatever we're calling that, street sales tax, I guess, is what we're calling that. Mm -hmm. At any rate, the, where you were a minute ago uh, with uh, the College Street uh, project development, we spent about a thousand or at least uh, encumbered uh, up to a million dollars on this thing, give or take. And isn't that where we were trying to put all of the overline wires underground? Isn't that what that project's about? So there's multiple facets to it. Um, of course, we did uh, work with the utilities to underground the power poles and or power, power lines, and then also the, um, the communications lines had done that work. Uh, the street 
improvement side of that would be, of course, the redoing of the pavement, replacement of the pavement, and then also replacing the curb and gutter and sidewalks in that corridor, and then actually adding the bicycle lane striping uh, infrastructure there and doing the improvements to the uh, where the TC Lee um, connection to yeah. college occurs, uh, making that more of a perpendicular uh, connection. How are we coming on that project? That one is complete. Okay, so we're done with the, this this million dollars that we've put into it. Is about it. Yes. So um, that that nine hundred twenty five thousand actually is also. Um, uh, community development block grants. Uh, there was a substantial contribution from the community development block grants that are rec referenced in this number as well. And then also there was some water line work that was worked into it that actually comes from the water department. Uh, so that, that one is a pretty complex project. Um, we also had some street, or I'm sorry, stormwater improvements that were funded through right. the stormwater sales tax. And then um, yeah, Sanitary the sewer had some a little bit of talk about let's do this almost as a model project and it was all done. Yeah. yeah, but we're about finished with that. Yes, actually, the, all the construction is done. We are working with the contractor. They are finishing up the final paperwork, but there is no more construction out there anticipated. Okay, okay. can I move on down then? About halfway down, it would be uh, nine oh three. Asphalt Street overlay, that's about $3 million. How's that project coming? Uh, the uh, overlay accomplished the first uh, round of um, what was originally on the list. We got that completed last year. Uh, we also looked at additional routes that were impacted. The, the Superior Bowen, who is the contractor, is work actively working through those uh, additional routes uh, so, to help put that in. So we have a list of the... Uh, Streets that we're going to do, yes. The streets that we've already done, yes, and all that. Okay, so yes. that's available. We could see that. Yes. Yes, okay. Mike. How do we get a copy of that so we can? We, I like to check the work out. Okay. Um, yeah, I can get with staff and. I mean, that's what we're here to do. Give so you a I like to, I mean, drive by and look at, see what it looks like. I mean. Okay, and then dropping on down to uh, twelve zero zero eight, uh, deferred maintenance on equipment. I know that we have equipment that uh, gets uh, torn up or broken or in use, whatever. Can you tell us anything about that? That's Wait, one of the saying? larger amounts. Uh, oh, eight. Yeah. I'll pass it to the, these guys because they, they know a little bit more on the maintenance itself, or the maintenance equipment itself. So I don't think you were part of the committee yet when we had the presentation on the equipment from the deferred, deferred maintenance. but. Essentially, um, the biggest purchases that we had were the uh, snow plows. We replaced 14, 17. 17 this past year. That was the biggest ticket item from this deferred maintenance for the equipment. Um, a number of other smaller items, some of the blades, um, extra blades that went on uh, the snow removal equipment. Um, Zan, were there a few other? Um, this was by far the, the biggest. There may be a few other trucks that were that were allocated for thinking back it's been almost two years ago but the uh citizens academy went mm -hmm. through that i was on the second group of that and they had all of the street sweepers torn up back in the bays uh, we get any new ones or how's that going it's actually a good question um so the first part of that as mike was talking about the 17 vehicles um there were 14 single axle plows um, and tandem axle plows combined there were two 550 pickups larger size pickups uh, and then there was one flatbed uh, truck that is going to be used as a brine unit um, to slide in a, a brine unit on top and, and do salt treatment uh, salt water treatment on the roads so those are the 17 vehicles that was the major part of that and that was the vehicle itself uh, the plows, wing plows, the uh, pre-wet systems on those trucks, basically the full outfit for them. Um, then additionally to that, there were a few trailers and um, the brine maker itself was part of that. 
So that's that's the majority of where that money came from and spent. All of that money has been spent, all those uh, vehicles and pieces of equipment. We actually just got the last two of those trucks in uh, about three weeks ago, and we're doing the final outfitting on those two trucks uh, now. How's that pothole truck doing? That the, was brand new <coughs> two years ago when I got to see it. They the, were showing it off and proud, proud. Yeah. The, the asphalt patching truck, uh, that is used on a daily basis. Um, we've had minor maintenance repairs that have need, been needed um, over the last year and a half, just normal wear and tear. For the most part, um, it's it's running really well. And we've actually been able to buy a secondary unit that's full behind trailer uh, to be able to do two crews out at once to be able to do pothole patching. Um, Ideally, with uh, some of the work that we're talking about doing to um, update and improve our street maintenance operations, we'll have fewer potholes. Um, that'll take three to five years to get us in a better position, but, um, but yeah, it's working great. As far as the sweepers that you were asking about, um, we actually did get a rental of a sweeper. Uh, it came in last week. So the last two weeks we've been sweeping and going back through and getting the crews back in that operation. Uh, the idea is that we have two sweepers that we have put forth in the budget, this upcoming budget. It's not out of the street sales tax money. Um, that's coming out of a different tax account. But uh, as long as that gets approved, we should have those two new sweepers on hand um, middle or end of July, possibly August. Uh, and once we have that in, we'll be back in full rotation on street sweeping. Um, so this kind of rental unit is getting the guys back in trained. Uh, we train them on a rental piece, and then that way they don't tear up our brand new trucks or brand new equipment. So. Sure. Um, I would like to suggest uh, that maybe this committee get to be uh, get an uh, invitation to come over there sometime. You remember when the uh, the Citizens Academy went through and you guys had a really strong presentation and uh, about all the departments and all of the stuff and all the things you do, it would just seem to me that this group uh, would uh, be well served to get to do that. Absolutely, we do that. Uh, that was actually something that was brought up internally um, uh, in the last two weeks to do kind of a touch a truck event kind of deal yeah. um, involving you all, some of our city manager, council office, things like that. Um, just get them out there, um, potentially getting something in a position where you can uh, do some demos of the equipment and see how that is and whatever. Just to... I thought it was very, very good. Not only well done, but well received. A lot of the people had a lot of questions and got involved in it. Yeah. And the cookies were good. <laughs> <laughs> But we did find um, after last year when we merged departments and we had a chance to kind of take inventory and look around and see everything, touch touch all the equipment ourselves. Um, your observations were correct on the the old street sweepers; they were way outdated, um, dilapidated. They weren't running, as I recall. So, for, so as a result, very very minimal street sweeping had been done the previous two years. Um, so, as Dan said, we were currently renting one. We put money in the stormwater sales tax budget to purchase, I'm sorry, to lease two new ones. And then the street sales tax will help supplement that with pay, help paying for staff to run those. So it's kind of a joint uh, effort there since obviously it benefits stormwater, not having stuff going down our storm sewers, and it's benefiting streets because it's keeping the quality of the street up. So we figured we'd kind of merge those two things together since they overlap. Just a thought. We have a, a sign crew over there that does a really fine job, and uh, I'm wondering if it would be a good idea, and this would have to be voted on, I'm just, I'm just throwing an idea out, that we have some kind of a plaque or something on our units, like this, the uh, snow plows, saying, provided by your street sales tax. Yeah. It's it's not, yeah, that's not a bad idea when we put those signs it's up around town idea. that this, this is funded by the street sales tax. So if someone's behind a plow and they see it yeah. for the overlay stuff, we could, we could definitely look into that and come back to the group. 17 vehicles or whatever, uh, that's a breeze for those guys. Yeah, we can look into that and come back to the group next time and just pitch something to y'all for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I got another question for you, Zan. Um, 
about street sweeping. I saw the street sweeper on Chrysler today, up around 39th Street, headed south. Mm -hmm. you're, the one you're buying, though, is they're going to be heavier duty than that one. That one looks pretty like a parking lot uh, sweeper, not a street sweeper. So it, it's, it is actually very deceiving. Um, the unit that you saw is the 2018 version, 2018 model of the sweepers that we are intending to buy. Uh, we're going to be getting the 2020, or yeah, it's, it's a lease to own, but yeah, so yeah. So we're leasing those out, but the uh, uh, it's the 2021 versions that we'll be leasing. So the big thing, um, and, and it does look very small, and if everyone sees it out and about on the streets, it looks kind of like a clown car. But I've, I've heard several people make comments about it. Um, the, the, the thing about it is the older sweeps, street sweepers that we had and that we always used, um, they are large, uh, but they're mechanical broom sweepers. And what that basically means is you have a series of five to seven brooms on the truck that uh, a couple of them just are pushing materials to the center underneath the truck. And then you have a larger broom on the back that picks up the material and puts it back and you have two options. It's either goes onto a conveyor um, that there's just a incline conveyor that goes up behind and the material flips up onto that incline conveyor. And then that conveyor goes up to the top of the hopper and just drops the material off. Um, the other option on the mechanical sweepers is that that material basically flips up into the bottom of a hopper and then you kind of back load the material. Uh, the problem with both of those options um, are as the brooms wear down and as the conveyor and everything wears down, uh, you pick up less and less material, and they're really only good for large items. If you have uh, big rocks, sticks, things like that that are in, in the road. Um, once you've picked all that stuff up and you're just dumping it in the top, it's kind of like throwing material. If you ever, everyone's raked leaves in their yard and everything, you bag that stuff up. If you just dump the leaves into the bag, you'll get, you know, the entire bag filled in, in no time. If you then pack all that stuff down, there may be, go from a full bag down to a third of the bag. So the newer sweepers that we're buying, they actually have a larger hopper. It's a smaller vehicle, smaller chassis. Um, but it's a six and a half yard hopper on the back versus the mechanical sweepers we've had in the past have been four and five yard hoppers. So it's a larger hopper in itself. The other part is it's a vacuum sweeper. So just like your vacuum bags, it packs that material in, you pick you know, all that stuff up, you get your vacuum bag out or the bag out of your vacuum when it's all done and it's solid, you know, really tough. Um, I've got pictures I can show anybody at the end of this. Um, you can see how the sweeper actually works. I've got some videos of it um, and pictures afterwards. When it's done, that material is packed in there kind of like a, a, a bale of hay. So at six and a half yards, that smaller kind of clown car sweeper is able to pick up two to three times the material of our older sweepers. Uh, there's less moving parts, less uh, maintenance and wear and tear on it. Um, and additionally, the, um, uh, the, because it packs that stuff in there, um, you get a lot less of the water waste and a lot of the, the other stuff. So um, it actually, it, it's smaller, but that actually makes it better because it's easier to turn around some of the intersections, easier to get around, um, less, uh, less dangerous for traffic around it because you don't have to pull farther out into the lanes to get around it and everything. So, um, overall, uh, most of the communities in the Kansas City metro area are going to this style of sweeper for their for their main roads. Now, do you does I mean you go out so far and then when it fills up, you can offload it onto a, another truck, or do you have to take it? You so can, how, how do you the you just stay, I mean, how yeah. many hours can it operate and before you have to unload it? It, it depends on how much material is on the streets. So we had it out all last week. I uh, said so we just got them in last Monday, got everybody trained up, um, and we started in earnest uh, sweeping on Wednesday of last week. Uh, Wednesday through Tuesday of this week, we were doing Sterling, and they were filling up the truck, the hopper, and dumping once a day in an eight-hour shift. Uh, they'd get about seven hours of clean time and then the go back, drop the material off, and then clean the truck up and be ready for the next day. 
Uh, today on Chrysler, they filled up the hopper the first time in about two and a half hours. Um, they ended up getting two and a half full loads of material um, today. So in the past, with the mechanical sweepers, we would actually go into a neighborhood and we would install a, install a, a dumpster in somewhere in that neighborhood. And the sweepers would go pick up the material, go back to the dumpster, unload it, and then drive back out. Um, with these, because we're able to pick up more material, we're not putting dumpsters on site in the neighborhoods. We're having everybody drop, drive back over to the Massman site. Everyone's familiar with the Massman site. It's uh, uh, where the drop-off depot, the citywide drop-off events are at, over off Truman and 291. Yeah, um, the old shelter. Yes, yes. Uh, so that is where they're actually going to take the material and dropping the material now. Um, the, for the most part, it hasn't been an issue, like I said, until today. We, we've been able to go through the entire time with just one load a day. Um, we will have to do it occasionally where we have to do two loads in a day or something. But uh, for the most part, the, those things will go about 30 miles an hour on the road. So it's not that much downtime going back and forth between. And we don't have to then store a dumpster on us on site. Because we're able to put so much more material in, we have a lot less downtime with that. Of course, when you get off of uh, Sterling and Chrysler and get into the neighborhoods mm -hmm. with all the old trees, you got to, yeah. I mean, the leaves are, you, you know, uh, yeah. The snow plows, I'm glad we got them, but you never know about snow. Yeah. But in the western part, especially of Independence, with all the old trees, you know you're going to have a ton of leaves. Yeah. So well, and I, in my mom's neighborhood, she told me, well, they won't run the uh, sweeper in my neighborhood this year. I said, well, I'll check on that. So, well, I seen the sweeper out today, I, you know, but, uh, yeah, her, her street is just loaded. With, uh, with leaves, and I'm sure those leaves wind up in the storm drain. They do, and that's why the storm water sales tax is paying for a good portion of that. Um, if, Like I said, I'm happy to show you all the videos and stuff after the meeting. Uh, one of the videos that I've got is going down through Manor Oaks with all of the big oak trees and, and you know a foot of leaves in the curb line, um, or non-existent kind of curb line over there, but the, the leaves over there, and one pass, they were able to clean the entire street. Um, in the past with a mechanical sweeper, um, leaves are not good at all for mechanical sweepers because it just blows the stuff all over the road. Uh, that would have been 10 or 12 passes and it would have been a, you know, three hour job to do one street where we did it in 15 minutes with this. Do you run, what's the time period on this? Is it all summer? Is it seasons? What we will run uh, every day. Um, outside of when there is like snow and ice on the ground. Um, if it if it's raining, if it's dry, hot, cold, windy, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that would impact it would be like snow and ice on the road. Other than that, we plan on running those things. Uh, is, is, unless they're down for maintenance, we'll be running those things pretty much 365 days a year. That's good. Your comment about the water pollution, my husband's very involved with that committee. Mm -hmm. And it, from hearing him, it, it disturbs me to see how many people think it's okay to throw these things out. That seems to be an educational thing. I mean, no grass and no leaves out in your street. Yeah. And the, people need to know that. Safety also, but, but it's not. It's just not. It shouldn't be done. Yes, and that's that's part of our MS4 permit, and um, which is our, our storm, but essentially our storm sewer permit that we deal with with the Missouri Department of Natural Resources and we have a component in there of education. We have an environmental group that uh, their focus is educating the public on that and grass clippings and uh, leaves are a huge one. People blowing them into the streets and even sometimes blowing them in directly into the storm inlet um, to get them out of the street which doesn't help and help matters either. So um, but yeah like Zan said it's going to take a little while to get caught up since we have it's been done so infrequently over the last few years. Once we finally get caught up and we have a, a, a routine where we can kind of just stay on top of it, it's it's going to look great. I mean, it'll, it'll take a good year plus to get to that point. Um, to your point, some of those leaves build up on each other, and it's so thick and mud and every grime underneath there. So it's not like we can just run through those sections really fast. You've got to take your time and um, and get through it. So but we'll get there. We'll get there for sure. Zang, what's the time period of the life of that truck um 
in general, your sweeper life uh, is uh, high value operational time is about five years. Um, max life operational time is about 10. So the ideal thing would be you do a, a five-year lease or a five-year operational time, and at the end of that five-year period, you own the vehicle. And then you can either make the decision at that point in time based on how that vehicle is at that point that you either trade in or you keep it in operation. But uh, we our conversations are that at between five and seven years, we would be looking at trading those in. Um, when we still have a decent amount of re remaining value on the on that, um, and then getting new vehicles. Okay, that's what I wanted because I know the life of my probably only be seven years. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they, they don't last long. No. Do you do you work on them in the house, or do you have to take them? Is, is there a dealer close? I mean, do you have to transport them to the dealer? Our dealer actually, um, it's one of the one of the things that we went with this company with. Uh, their shop is Red. Um, uh, they're right over there off of Sterling, just north of Truman Road. Um, there's that old that old blue building that was kind of vacant for a number of years. They just moved in there in the last year or so. They were maybe two more miles down the road down Truman. Yeah. Um, but they, they're local. Um, they have already told us that if one of our machines breaks down and it's not something that we can fix easily, quickly, uh, they will give us a loaner on it. Um, in addition, we are paying part of that lease is paying for a maintenance agreement on there. So they will do all the general maintenance on it. The only thing we'll have to do in house is the wearables. So the seals and the brooms themselves. Right. Okay. Any, anything you can do to clean the city up is a big plus for everybody. That is the goal. And I'm with Gloria. I, I wish code enforcement was a little better on some of this stuff, you know, but. Uh, You're just making the public aware. Right. I, mean, I think a lot of people are not, they don't realize that you can't blow your leaves or your grass out in the street. But I see some of these commercial guys that mow lawns that are blowing it out in the street, and they're the ones that they need to go after. Are we continuing on with the mic and stuff, or yeah. what are we doing? Same with Zane. I want to ask him questions about other stuff. <laughs> Zane will be around until ten tonight, so you can <laughs> you can ask him questions afterwards for sure. Do we have, we got more budget questions, Jerry? Uh, just, just a quick question: Where are you guys uh, officing? I'm over in City Hall. Second, oh, sorry, I didn't realize that Kick, got kicked off. Uh, I'm over at City Hall, second floor. I'm officially in this building, but I'm at the all all the other in buildings. Building. So I'm, but yeah, technically my office is in this yeah. building, and I am over at the main uh, street site over at 1030 South Chrysler, uh, the Chrysler and 23rd Street location. Yeah. Okay. And and Tanya, where are you? I'm at the streets department. I'm the admin down there. At, at the okay. Streets, yeah. Right on Chrysler. Okay. Thanks. And I. We used to call that the city garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Zan or Mike, uh, you guys, if uh, I, I think most of us would be interested in uh, a, a tour of the facility whenever you can set that up, if you'd let us know, I think several of us would be interested. I'm sure. Do you want to, us to set that up for the next, would the next meeting be the presentation? Next one would be the presentation. Okay, and that would be in... September. September. If you all want it, would like to do it before that, um, we can set something up maybe late July, early August, do a special session. Can I bring my grandson? <laughs> sure. I don't think we'll put you in in harm's way in any trucks. of that stuff. So, um, but we'll we'll touch base after this, see what we can do if we can put it all put everything in one one location, so we don't have to. If you could, obviously, we've got multiple facilities. Maybe so we suggest two or three dates and then we could because you know like we got grandkids and ball games and all that but if we could get to an agreeable date by sure yeah we'll do okay uh, are you all with this um would you be wanting to do it during the day um or would this be like an after five o'clock type of thing i just need to know for potentially having staff there if needed 
Oh, yeah. Anytime works for me. Does anybody work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll send out a few dates and, and some some rough times that we can figure something out. Yeah, that worked real well after after uh, five or it was last time. If you guys were there, were you? No. You weren't I, there for that. No. I think he was already over to the WPC side yeah. by that yeah. point. No, that, that when whenever I helped out the one year, the last year, I think it was, that did work out real nice. I think it was like a five or a six o'clock and you did the various yeah. um, stops. Yeah. Uh, I think you broke into three groups and kind of did each yeah. tour individually. Yeah. Uh, so I think that Citizens really Academy well worked out real nice. Just very informative for this group. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody have any more questions uh, on the budget, on the financial report? I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Okay. The way we used to do this created a whole lot less confusion and a lot less questions because we had the projects presented to us on paper and then they would explain where we were on those projects. We had ones that were completed. We had ones that were in design. We had those that were, you know, uh, in certain stage of completion, you know, some that were future, um, and it, it gave us a lot more information on all the projects we were working on, including the amount of miles of overlay, you know, that we were intending to do that year, how many we had already accomplished. Right. Um, you know, because I heard a whole bunch of questions that really didn't need to be asked. Right. Had we done this the way we used to do it? Now, I'm, you know, I mean, I was on here when Harry Truman was, <laughs> you know, county commissioner. But a little more information. It, it gave us a lot more information here, which made it easier for us as a committee. Uh, and, of course, there was still explanation that needed to be done on some of this because, well, we're in the design stage or we're, you know, waiting for bids or, you know, whatever the situation was. Plus, at that time, of course, we were get, doing big projects like Jackson Drive and Little Blue Parkway, which were done in segments. Mm -hmm. And so there was always something information-wise on those big projects. Now, I don't think we have anything quite to that. Well, and I think right um, the key things to to uh, branch off of that would be originally that team was only meeting in the spring and the fall. Yes, if I we were just doing twice a year, March and... Yeah. yeah, and so that would be Over, pre or in preparation for the oversight committees to council. Right. And then, um, as you guys have seen, uh, we do the PowerPoint presentation preparation for that presentation to council, and we do, uh, Tim, highlight those projects. Um, if you guys want us to, we could do like a little snippet, like a mini, not, not necessarily a presentation, but kind of a uh, status update on the actual projects themselves and, and not dig into as much with the budget side, but we could give you, you know, top well, we, five projects. We did discuss budgets on projects yeah. where we were financially on certain projects and how much, you know, this was going to cost, you know, just yeah. the studies on some of these were quite a bit of money. I, no, I don't think so. I'm going That's to agree with what he said and give yeah. you a little more information. For instance, Nolan and Fair, mm -hmm. on each of the entries we had before, we have to have a little paragraph. What is Nolan and Fair? I mean, I, I need some description as to what is happening yeah. at Nolan and Fair. Just a small paragraph, save us a lot of time and save us a lot of questions. Okay. okay? Well, um, I'll take I'll take that as a uh item and then i think we would just hit some of the highlights um active projects there's some yeah we do have stuff in design we've got a couple that are going towards acquisition right now uh, but yeah i think if we can hit hit that highlight and give you more of a rundown of the all the projects and then leave it up to the committee to ask if they have a in a particular interest in a right we had project. we had like even the goals like streets to or sidewalks to school projects that you know, we're we're on this one this year. Next year, we're looking at this one possibly, and you know, we we had a lot of information given to us, which made things nice, and we knew where we were. We're halfway through this project, and 
you know, and we're on budget. And, you know, I, th I think with what happened is with a new, the new group that came in here, there was no one from the old group to kind of help steer here. Here's what we were doing before. Here's what we, what the group had asked for, what the committee had asked for. And in an effort to be as transparent as possible, we're like, let's, let's give them everything. And it's, too much. It muddies the water. It conf it's confusing. I mean, it was confusing to us, as everybody knows, for the first couple of meetings. We can, couldn't get our heads wrapped around it all. So if we try to shore it up to what you're saying, Tim, bring it bring it down to just the, the you know, the big projects. You can ask questions about all of them. Here's all the other projects, but just kind of focus on the big ones that are the, the big ticket items and give an overview of those. We can certainly do that. Well, no, we probably need on every item that we're looking at here. Not just the big tickets. We gotta have the small ones too, because people ask us. Well, no, absolutely. Still have those available and allow questions for those, but not to spend. I mean, the, these meetings are supposed to be informative, but they're supposed to be an hour. You know, well, an hour well, and half. Be, like you say, it's gonna be quicker if we have it all on a piece of paper so we can look at or email it to us. Because these, what this is exactly what got emailed to us, so we went over it. But if we had an email saying all these things and this is where we're at this is what's happening on this project this is what we spent broke down like they used to have now that sounds a whole lot better well it it helped us get the information we needed all the you know discussion that needed to be had on the issues within an hour and it was i mean it was kind of it was a little more casual wasn't it it was just i mean when Tim did it and when it was just more information on each item so we could kind of follow it along and not have to ask so many questions on each entry I just so think it's safe similar to the way Mike was doing it with the PowerPoint presentation right just it's do not that gonna for each save meeting. paper but it's gonna save time just do that for each meeting because we we can stop making meeting quarterly if you'd all like to and just do the two times a year and maybe extend those time. make those well, a little there, longer there will still be questions yeah. sure but you know, because we always had questions, but there were, you know, I, I think it simplified it for us. And and we were all basically on the same page because we had all had the information right there in front of us. Kind of noted. I probably have files going back years. I may have to send you an example. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just say those are the two people with the most seniority over there on this committee so uh i i think they what they said was yeah it, i think it worked better well is, is john powell still consulting no no yeah. after the merger he retired again okay i was gonna say he he used to run the meetings for us and so he would have a handle on it but apparently that's not going to be helpful so I, I think uh, looking ahead to this next fiscal year, it's going to be even more money, right? From what I see, the the, the projection of public works spending is going to be, what, more than $25 million? Is that correct? I mean, when I looked at the CIP 20 through 26 program, I mean, uh, Public work spending this next budget year is going to be going to be significant, and it's hard for us to like this. I mean, you know, like I said, this committee is our oversight's on the street sales tax. So when you start mixing in debt financing and all this other stuff, it gets a little confusing for us to 